Welcome back, rescuers, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Balance takes command, Raal gets a new monk companion, as Rotana makes a running jump. After an intense fight, with enemies and companions alike falling, Elise and Tuck are finally reunited. However, Sultana is faced with the reality that Adette is under the thrall of the Sandman. When will Jens be reborn? Did Dravel survive the fall? And where on Discora is Honorino? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. Unless you guys, and by guys I mean the two gentlemen outside of the uh, RC, unless you two guys want to do anything this evening, uh, we will skip forward to the next morning. Balance is too exhausted to do anything. Thank you. <laughs> it has been a day. It has been a day. Raw would probably uh, apologize for his... Um... <laughs> His bad introduction to Tuck. Make sure that Tuck's not crazy afraid of him. Oh. Because he had to be scary. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he, he genuinely doesn't look concerned or worried. Um, he has, like, um, one of Elise's shirts on now, mm-hmm. which is, like, tied around the waist, a bit more like a monk robe. Um, so he's now decent. <laughs> Uh, he looks a, a little cleaner, um, and yeah, he genuinely didn't seem doesn't seem worried about you. Um, you know, cool. a little raised eyebrow that there's a dragon ball wandering around, but other than that, he seems pretty cool with it. Um, yeah, he probably just has Austin. to. Hey, I I, <laughs> I know I'm bad with introductions. He, he probably was like, I forgot that I had seen you before, and you hadn't <laughs> seen me. <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <laughs> should have, should have, should have not been so scary. Uh, really, it's all right. Uh, thanks for saving us. I, I guess. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> no problem. He puts a little hand out to you to to shake yours. Yeah, handshake. <laughs> um, We're all excited and then- when people are nice. Yeah. And I mean, not scared Tuck of him. seems... <laughs> He's relieved <laughs> that he hasn't traumatized someone. No. Um, Tuck is generally tired and exhausted and, like, the food you guys prepare, he just, like, takes it very calmly and very carefully, but he does eat a lot. Um, it's been a while since he's seen some food. And he, he settles down with, with Elise outside and they spend the night, like, talking and doing other things. Um, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, Raul just bees friendly. Because uh, I think he wants them to know that he is friendly. So yeah, he definitely they, does they, they, No one else in the group seems worried or terrified by you. You haven't met Adet yet, so who knows? Yeah, Tuck's but, the only uh, new like, one. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's just me and Tuck yeah. talk. So yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, then. Um, I work on my next, things. You work on your things. That's definitely, yeah. yes, you work on the things. Assume that um, I'm uh, always just doing that. <laughs> it's always licking a wood somewhere, so yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, say, did you just morning... say he's always licking his wood somewhere? <laughs> That's exactly what I said. No one mentioned it. Yes, it is exactly what I said. Um, all right, so next morning rolls around. <laughs> Zortana, you feel tired. You do not feel like you had a good sleep. Odette looks as she ever does, just 
asleep. Um, her face looks contorted a little bit in pain and she occasionally whimpers, but there's no more symptoms of being the Sandman staring, uh, looking at her. Um, there's nothing like that. Uh, everyone gets a full night's rest, so you level up. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Um, Zoltana, you don't regain your hit points, however, um, because Sandman was annoyed at you uh, for calling him out. Um, Balance, He's a bitch. however. Hi. <laughs> You you wake up feeling a little bit more comfortable in your leadership skills than you ever were before. Like, you've led a damn good team here. You got them up together. You planned how this was going to go down. And it, it came off almost flawlessly. Give or take a death and <laughs> the question mark hanging over whether or not your intended victim is actually dead or not. Um but things have generally worked out a okay, um, and with that, you gain the inspiring leader feat. <gasps> oh shit! <laughs> okay. However, I hate the ten minute rule. That's the biggest part of what I hate. So it's five minute. Like that's it. Like you do not need to roll five minutes worth of talking, but like it only takes five minutes. Like ten minutes is ridiculous in my opinion. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. You're oh welcome. fuck! Thank you. You did good, so I, re I, re I reward good things with good things. Um, okay, it's it's a bright and cheerful morning. Um, what do you guys want to do? I imagine uh, after everybody's had a long rest, we've probably slept in a little bit. And yes. by a little bit, <laughs> I mean it's probably noon. <laughs> Uh, like, just despite the fact that, you know, everyone's trying to give a debt and there's uh, all ton of some room, uh, unfortunately, your Snurf Bethlehem friend really does need to hide inside the car during the day. So he just, he sneaks in very quietly. He's like bundled up in the corner and you barely notice he's there. Um, Balance will probably round everybody up and be like, all right, we need to get moving. We need to make our way back to Falsum as quickly as we can then. The sooner we get back, the sooner we can, uh, well... Get on our next path in this journey. Well, I was actually thinking maybe I wouldn't travel back with you. I think I might take some of the tunnels down there, back down to the uh, the Earth Dark. You sure it's safe? A lot of things around this world seems to have broken up. Um, and I think I need to go talk to my people. You gotta do what you gotta do. Right. If you could then, um, an extension from us to you and your people, we're gathering as many as we can to try to fix this. Um, it's been a slow process of use, as you have seen, but if your people are willing to join us, if you yourself are willing to join us, we can use all the help we can get. That's sort of something that Jens and I were talking about where you guys were planning your things and whatnot. And we heard what that Lesbian lady was telling you. No, we weren't supposed to overhear, but, you know, inquiring minds. Uh, so we spoke about it. We both spoke about what we could probably do to add to this. Um, I'm going to go speak to my people down in the earth start and see if I can get them to come <laughs> to see the light, so to speak, but not in a literal way, um, and come join you guys. And help you out, but I've got to go talk to him. And Jens was talking about talking to her offspring and her lineage, her ancestry, whatever you want to call it. Balance looks slightly taken aback. That would be most wonderful. The more allies we have in this, the better our chances, I feel. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to go down or where this conflict is going to take us, but wherever that may be, the more people we have, the better our chances that someone will be able to do something. Right. It's exactly what we were thinking. And at the end of the day, if we don't try and help save the world, then we're probably not going to have one. Now, I'd rather die trying than die and not I'm done nothing at all. Jens felt very much the same way. Well, I appreciate it. I'm sure we all do here. As do the many others that are counting on us right now. Right. Raw gives him a hug. Aww. 
get you a hug back. Group hug. We all get in. Nope. Oh. Okay, I'm only little. Uh. <laughs> you gotta, gotta give me some breathing room here. Um, now on that note about Jens and her egg, she told me where her people were. Well, at least where to start looking. Sure. If I take her egg with me, I can, when she rebirths, I can get her to those people and she can start working on them. I mean, she'll just be a baby, but we know a couple of spells for age people. And he smiles. Uh, sh- sure. Uh, just be careful. Right. She told me specifically not to kick it like a ball. Right. Isn't Why the egg as big she- as you are? It's not a small egg. <laughs> <laughs> I would just but I can be very change cautious. It to different things and carry it. It's not a problem. By the time I get down in there. Are there there's kangaroos there's in this world? <sighs> can he I be want ca- to say no, but yes. <laughs> he could just put it in the pouch and just have her. <laughs> oh, that's a funny picture in my mind. Yes, I know, listeners, that they are fucking uh, mammals. I get that. <laughs> but fuck you. It's adorable. <laughs> it is adorable. <laughs> um, no, I, I take pretty good care of her. Don't worry. She's a bit crazy, but she's good at heart. Okay, because I don't really know all that much about eggs. <laughs> he leans over and like pats the back of your hand and like, I kind of figured that one out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> take take care of it. That was my plan. I'm sure you would have done a wonderful with it regardless. <laughs> I would have done my best. Same as you here. And he gives him the egg. Egg he takes removed the egg. from inventory. <laughs> egg removed And responsibility. Inventory. Um... He, he wraps the thing around the egg uh, so he can like strap it to his back and keep it in place best he can. Um, when he says, well, I'm probably going to start taking my leave now. I think I need to go talk to my people and I've done what I've contracted to do with you guys. So, On the subject, uh, as promised, uh, Balance is going to reach into his coin purse and pull out 20 platinum pieces. Okay. And hand them to Homer and just say, Ten is for you, and ten is for Jens when she is uh, no longer an egg. It's a little bit more than we agreed upon, but honestly, the two of you more than earned it, and then some. Uh, he takes the money. Um, he says, I think you a lot for that. It's, well, pretty sure this won't be the last time I'd be seeing any year. Of course. You can come to Falsam and find the monastery. And that's the four fault. So, uh, right, I fought there before. Cut the times. Oh, know where I'm headed okay. then. Be a good yeah. start. I'm sure if I drop someone's name, they'll be able to point us to you. So, ah, uh, Bogram. Bogram's down there. All right, yeah. He's a nice enough guy. Yes. All right. Well, good luck to you all. Safe journey. Yeah. Um, he steps out of the. Uh, he steps to the porch area of the RC. He turns into a giant eagle. <laughs> uh, the egg disappears into his belongings, so it just becomes part of him, and he takes off into the sun. Don't fly into the sun. Did we learn nothing from Icarus? <laughs> <laughs> He's not made of wax. That's true. That's worse, because then he'll just he set himself on Burn. fire. <laughs> At least we'll have dinner then. He takes off into the sun and flies around. Well, you have to eat an egg. No, stop it. Um, Probably really warm up there. Flies off into the sun and then you see him just disappear. And Um, then there were two NPCs. (laughs) No, three. No, four. (sighs) Fuck. (laughs) Well, three and one unconscious one. We have the same number of NPCs now. (laughs) No, we have one less than we traveled up here with. No, we have the same amount. (laughs) <laughs> Same amount, but one of them's incapacitated. Are you guys oh, okay? God. Are you, you kept the ones that are like really similar in voice? I hate you all. Are you well? <laughs> <laughs> How many people are here? It's a dangerous world, V. We need friends. 
Oh, jeez. Um, and it just so happens they're all it's all Tatna's friends. It's going to take I have you a lot about, of friends. Mine are dead. So it's about six days if you're going to go travel back to um, Telnath. But it's only about four or five days if you're going to make your way to uh, Falsum directly. Falsum. Um, Falsum directly and Balance is going to do a new thing to try to get us there faster. All right. Uh, hold one second. Sultana, are you going to tell them that you're mocked by the Sandman? Does, do I know that that's what it is or do I just like... Yes, you are well aware this is what's happened. <laughs> Okay, so your symbol of tear has turned turned into a giant middle finger. <laughs> I love that. Is that true? No, <laughs> nothing. Can His I, symbol is a fist. Now it's just you. a middle finger sticking up. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens when we go into the dream world. Oh my god! Yes, no. please do it. Please do it. <laughs> I will let Sultana decide it if that's the case. Um, but yeah, you know this is happening. You know that the next time you fall asleep. The salmon is going to be there. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I'll be like, guys, hmm. uh, I, there's something I gotta tell you. Uh, I can never sleep again. So, hmm, it's the same man. <laughs> uh, he uh. He's like possessing my wife. <laughs> the Sandman is, he's uh, got control of Odette. And uh, I told him off and uh, he put a mark on me. So if I go to sleep again, uh, very likely I will fight him and uh, possibly die. So just, you know, just a warning. Um, if I do die, he'll probably possess my body. So uh, burn me. And, uh,. <laughs> Yeah. And she just like walks off. Ross nose starts bleeding. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> what? What do we what do we do? Balance looks deep in thought, like he's trying to think of what to do. Sultana has moodily stormed off. Can we get them out? Can we get them out to fight him? Elise pipes up and she says you can either, from the stories I remember about the salmon, you can either fight him in the dream where he's strongest, but more easily able to find him, or you can fight him in the real world where he's a little easier, but he's more able to put you to sleep and then more able to take control of you for things. If you're going to fight him in the dream, you, it's always best to have people to help you because he's very strong there. And Sultana, she's going to need to sleep. She's not an elf. I was able to join her once in a dream. It's a difficult process that I haven't perfected. But that one time when the Sandman did show up, he basically booted both of us out of the dream in an instant. How could we draw him out? Um, let me have a think, and I will give her a history check. It's not great. We could figure out if like he likes peanut butter a lot or something. I don't think it works like that. I I can't think of any way to pull him out of a dream. I just there are ways of getting people into dreams. Uh obviously balance you have a certain way. But there are potions and spells. I don't know enough of the spells, I'm sorry. The only other thing I could think to do then would be for us to go full speed back to Falsum and try to see if we can get someone in the Witcher Society to aid us. If Demi is there, then I imagine that she'll have an answer to at least. We can take turns keeping Zoltaran awake. We can push the horses as fast as we can. I think I have a solution I've been trying to work on. That'll get us there a bit quicker as well. We'll need I to go now. Benno steps up, uh, pulls out his bow, and he says, I'll take control of the horses and see if I can make them go a little faster, see if we can take a fast, clear route. 
I'll do what I can with them. Sounds like a plan. Okay, then. Uh, Benno up top the horses. Uh, Elise and Tuck will be on keeping Zoltana awake duty. <laughs> Never have I ever. <laughs> They're just in the back of the car playing all sorts of stupid ass games. Yes. Never have uh... I ever committed a murder. Oh, shit. All, th- all three drink. Everyone drinks, yeah. <laughs> Balance roll. <laughs> and Beto up front. Fuck. All right. This game is hard. <laughs> <laughs> we are not role playing three days worth of ever by ever. Oh, God. We'll all be shit faced. <laughs> the whole okay, time. Um, if you keep the horses running as fast and as ragged as you can. Um, if, uh, Benno does what he can, uh, I know that balance is a very cool thing he wishes to do and we will definitely do that, uh, because it's super cool. Um, we can probably get it down to three and a half days, but it's three and a half days in which Sultana cannot go to sleep. Oh man. Oh, uh, that would be, that would put, cause you're already at one. So one, two, three, that would put you at level four. Oh, Yes. Which, for the uh, lovely people at home, level four. Oh, make sure I'm in the correct game now. Uh, level four exhaustion involves your hit point maximum half. 7, 16, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56. <gasps> Zoltana, you are so lucky I leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievably, actually, in this case. Um, so, um... I'm actually going to only use seven of my new thing. Mm-hmm. The eighth, I'm actually going to do a different new thing in the morning. Okay. That's cool. Uh, do your different thing in the morning before we set out. So, um, And then we'll we'll continue narrating through the rest. In the morning when Zoltana starts getting real fucking ragged like that, I've been pulling an all-nighter ragged. Uh, Balance is going to just kind of... I so like I assume we're in the back in the back of the cart and Balance kind of just looks her over. It's it's cramped in the back of the cart. Uh, let's say that Elise and uh Tuck have gone to sit on top of the cart, uh, because yeah. Swapping out, keeping watch <laughs> so and everything. It's it's a little tight up here, yeah. Okay. Um especially on the first day, because the first day, you know, Zoltana will be able to stay awake the first day, it's not a problem. Um, Zoltana, you're already looking like um shit. No offense. If you want, I can try to help. What can you possibly do to help? She's um, very cranky. <laughs> I could try to see if I can lend you some some energy, see if that'll help you a bit. It's Fine. all kind of experimental, but if it works, it could help. Oh, you're going to experiment on me. Ooh, fancy. I mean, if you'd rather, I could just let you wallow in misery. She means thank you, is what you hear from the top of the cart. I kind of assumed I just liked the witty banter. Oh, so you're witty now. (laughs) Please do the thing, Arch. (laughs) All right, Zoltana, just shut up and sit still for a second. Balance is going to reach a single hand forward with uh, index finger out. And Mm -hmm. like an inch away from Zoltana's forehead, uh, he's going to use... Uh, his new ability, Restore Vigor. Cool beans. Which, as an action, uh, I can touch one creature and do one of the following. Remove a reduction of one of its ability scores, remove an effect that reduces its HP maximum, or reduce its exhaustion level by one. I cast a level two Starbucks. You can't reduce the level of exhaustion she has. Why? We had this discussion before. That the exhaustion she has from Ninverna can't be removed. I'm not getting rid of that one. I'm getting rid of the lack of sleep one. Uh, she hasn't gained that yet because she slept last night. That's what I'm saying, though, is I'm using this for those. Okay, so each day you'll do that? Right. Okay. So anytime we'll she's like... <laughs> this is to keep her from getting worse. <laughs> well, she's super cranky now. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, I thought yeah, so- I thought we were like three days in or something. That's why I was being so cranky. I was just assuming that we were already like, not quite. This is day this one. is still day one. This is Uh-oh. still day one. Cranky. I can't, like, this I can't is her take day, day three. <laughs> <laughs> 
day three, she's left inside alone. There's one person, and occasionally just like Sultana, she gets so super, super angry, so she doesn't fall asleep. Did, did- um, <laughs> Day three of exhaustion level Zoltana is just Zoltana sitting in a dark corner with um with one of her hand axes, just like picking her fingernails <laughs> with her hand axe. And every time someone looks at her rug, she points the hand axe at them like she's going to murder them. <laughs> um, Actually, that's probably more like day seven. Yeah, we're definitely not going to hit day seven and you would not last that long regardless of Restore Virgo because holy shit, the seven days without sleep. Um Yes, uh, definitely. Like you, you begin to feel like your eyelids droop quite heavily. But every time, like a balance, like sneaks in super quietly, trying not to piss you off more, just like bumps you on top of the head and skips <laughs> out. Like your eyes open up a little bit more. Um, you're a little bit more aware of what's going on, and like the the twenty four hours of not sleeping is not exactly washed away, but much easier. Um, balance you notice on like the third day that veers into the fourth day and you've begun noticing it throughout the time you've been traveling um you begin to see that there are some runes that seem to be glowing inside her eyes like if you just look at her and you catch her eyes in the right way you can see inside the pupil there's this tiny tiny little rune that has been etched um it's getting brighter and brighter every day wonderful that's the cool shit you learn every day from that. Um, okay, so let's uh, pretend we've wound back two days. Um, uh, what's your other cool ability you wish to do to speed this process along? The other cool thing that I'm going to do to speed this along is uh, as Benno is pushing the horses as hard as possible, um, he's going to sit next to Benno and say, from where we are right now, about a mile out, which direction would you say we needed to be heading right now? Uh, he kind of like stands up on the bench. He looks around, looks at the position of the sun and like points in a direction. And that's the most direct route? Uh, yes, I believe so. Keep the horses on a straight path. I'm going to try something. I'm going to give him an animal handling check because this sounds super dodgy. <laughs> oh, he's he's fine. Let me just chuck his NPC cheat. They all now have NPC cheat, uh, sheets. So Hooray. Yeah. This is how much work I've been doing recently. Uh, Benno, who the fuck Benno, I? Benno. Well, is he, he not being 16. useless for once? So proud of him. A- animals and like freaking survival checks. He is the bomb. Yeah, he got twenty four, dude. Like okay. Yeah, these horses ain't going nowhere. He doesn't want them to be. So balance is going to hold a palm out and kind of half close his eyes. And uh, a, I picture it in my head as like a distortion of like purplish psychic energy, it, roughly the size of a ten foot by ten foot cube, uh, seems to materialize ahead of them. And uh, as soon as the horses and the cart and everything hits the the cube, they get teleported a mile away in that direction that Benno indicated. And he is using uh, Nomad's Gate. Nice. Um, as you guys pass through the gate, you go to the traditional stalking world. Everything is weirdly sepia tones. Um, Raoul, your spectre friend is just like sitting on a bench. Like if you're inside the cart opposite you, or if you're on the bench at the front, or on top of the, of the wagon or whatever, he's just sitting nearby, just waving at you occasionally, <laughs> just watching whatever the hell is going on. Um, you guys who are able to see Zoltana, see, um, uh, you can see that Ninverna is like very much attached to her. Um, and you can see her, despite the face that is broken apart and, and all this weird stuff that's going on, is looking concernedly at Zoltana. Um, you suspect that she may be helping this effort to keep her awake. Um, and very much so Zoltana, when you pass into there, you can hear her screaming a little louder. Um, uh, it's very unnerving and very jarring. Um, <laughs> And yet the world moves, you almost stay stationary as the horses like to pick one or two steps and you appear out the other side. Um, You see the kind of cube behind you and it disappears as the last the caravan itself passes through. Rob tries, can I do things in the stalking while we're there? You can try. (laughs) Okay, I just want to give Spectre his thing I made him. Oh yeah, of course you can. Yeah, um, because wh- if I if I believe rightly, I think you're about to chain these link uh, these gates, aren't you? Yeah, I can do seven of them in one day, so that's seven miles. Yeah, 
Um, Balan's got more side not, points, yo. Yeah, I, do you know what? I think for the sake of like it being more interesting, I think that rather than just doing like a gate, a gate, a gate, a gate, a gate, you just do one gate that goes seven miles or six miles or five miles or four miles or three miles or two miles, et cetera, et cetera. So rather than like having to like blah, 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 each each individual one, just do it as like one big cast and bam, you've gone. Um, I think you should be able to do that without a problem. Um um, yeah, so yeah, you can you can just chain it into one big cast. Like I think casting loads of individual ones, like I don't think you'd need to do that. Um not right now. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. If you want to, yeah, sure, but I'm not saying you have to. Um okay, so yeah, you get to get, get to jump your your seven miles, um, which does give Rao the chance to talk to his Spectre friend a little bit. <laughs> Once per day, he gets a slightly longer <laughs> time chatting with him. <laughs> so uh, let's say you're sitting on top of the cart. It's just you two and this day two or whatever it is. You know what's happening. Uh, you're ready for this one this time. Raw already has this little thing in his hand. Hi, Spectre. Hi, Raw. Uh, what's happening? Oh, you know. You well, you weren't here uh, earlier. What what happened? I was busy dealing with about 20 to 25 deaths. Hmm. Kind of busy, yeah. Hmm. Long day at the office. Anyone important? <laughs> Everyone is considered important, bro. Well. <coughs> well, I mean, you know, but like... Never mind. You mean Travos? Anyone that we would like to be dead? Any good news? Any bad news? Anyone relevant? Well, his was not a soul that I reached that day. Hmm. Incredibly difficult to kill that one. Well, we got what we needed in any sense. Indeed. I guess we'll keep an eye on that. I wasn't there for it, I don't... I noticed. You decided to... run from the fight, <laughs> so I wasn't really... I had to keep anyone from getting to the prisoners. Anyways, I... here. And Raw hands him his little thing. He's made a whale, but the front part of this whale is more in the shape of like a skull than anything it but it doesn't look scary if that makes sense it has this kind of like day of the dead vibe where it's kind of like just very neutral you know and uh very decorative yeah but uh the front part of this whale is just very kind of uh dead looking in a <laughs> not scary way if that makes sense this like some, like like one of those anatomical thing, dummies you know? where it's like half skeleton yeah. half uh flesh yeah it, it, i mean it's kind of creepy but like <laughs> you know he didn't you're, do you're that hoping, you're hoping it's yeah he's creepy. yeah um i i have a question um mm -hmm. is this made from the wood of savras's tree uh yeah okay cool because you're running low on that material. You have just enough to do the last two things you spoke to me about. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, remember what one of those things was. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll just say yes. Yeah, I'll remind you of them later. <laughs> okay. um, he reaches out and you see like his uh, his skeletal hands reach out from under his uh, under his robes. And he, he takes the, um, the little... Uh, the little half whale, half anatomically correct skeleton part of the whale. Um, he turns and looks them over and he says, You made this for me? Sure. You remember the whale from the ocean and I was very scared of it at first. And it was, the ocean's a scary place and all that. But this yeah. thing I was so scared of first, it was nice and... Uh, made me feel less scared about the ocean, and I mean, I'm still scared to die, but I, you know. Oh. Well, 
he looks. Uh, I don't know. Take an insight check. Like, how easy is it <laughs> how, to read yeah. death? Um, yeah. How well do I know how to read Spectre's dumb dead face? Insight? Yeah, please. 17. Why do I ship Rawl and Spectre now? Please stop. <laughs> no. Neck, <laughs> necrophilia. <laughs> is it though? Like, if um, he's a physical embodiment, I have no like idea if it is. Embodiment of death. <laughs> is that really necrophilia? Like, it's grim. It's grimophilia. Um, okay, <laughs> so he looks genuinely touched and moved that someone has given him something. Normally, he just gets abuse or tranquil acceptance. Um, <laughs> He's never had a gift before, and Aww. he kind of looks surprised and touched and, and happy. Like, you can just read this in almost an instant on his face, and then it just returns back Raw, to the... like, holds his breath because he imagines <laughs> this isn't going to be pleasant, but he wants to give him a hug. <laughs> uh, are you going to give him a hug? Yeah. <laughs> We're all like, is... Yeah. Rawl's a hugging boy. Rawl and it's... this guy are the best friends. <laughs> I it's love it. super cold. Yeah, I mean, he was expecting it, it to. <laughs> genuinely not be great feels for him. like. Uh, genuinely feels like you're hugging death, yeah. Ral. Um, he doesn't do it for very long. <laughs> you would not be able to do this for particularly yeah. long. He's very surprised by that and this gesture. Um, and just before, like the end of the gate appears, as you finish like your journey through. Um, Thanks for the help. Never had a gift or a hug. Well, uh. I'll have something for you. You've done plenty for me. When the time comes. And then you pop out the other side of the Boop. gate. Boop. Ah. Uh, um. Ra, were you saying something? It was really echoey in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on top of the cart. <laughs> yeah. You guys would have heard all the murmurings, uh, but I'm gonna say you probably didn't hear the conversation. Um, I know, I'm just making a joke. That would be super mean. <laughs> and I kind of want you to. Um, you could. Uh, okay. Um, I assume that Ral and Balance sleep as normal or meditate as normal. Yeah, Ral's gonna also do another thing on the way, and Balance has okay. to do a thing as well. Oh my goodness! You can go first. Okay. Mine's not well, very long. Well, probably it's a dumb. Dumb little thing. Okay, so over the three days, we meet, go through the stalking a few times. We heal up Zoltana a few times. <laughs> what else is Balance doing? Um, during one of his meditation sessions, Balance is going to try to go to his inner. Uh, actually, fuck. There's two things then. Uh, during meditation, he's going to go to that inner zone where Marnak is. Yeah. Um and. Once he's there, he's just going to say, I think it's time that you and I had that chat about, uh, well, teach me how to use fire. Monarch's waiting in that space for you. And he, he's a little taken aback and then the sudden change in tact, it, it, it kind of throws him a little bit. And he says... You want me to teach you how to use fire? You the one time had literally burned me. Yeah, I remember that. Which is not something that I had thought possible with this kind of skill set. But if that is something that can be done, that kind of firepower, pardon the joke again, could be very useful. It could have been useful back there, but I understand things were hectic. How would you make a fire? Well, usually you need to have some source of heat, friction, or some f source of energy. What is friction? Just resistances of two objects and forcing them to... Uh, Go against each other, typically. Imagine you're doing that with the air. Balance kind of tilts his head to the side. Creating friction with 
the air. Yes. You have the ability to move things. Why not make things... Particles in the air rub against each other so fast you create enough friction to create fire. You can't do it for particularly long. The source material will run out unless you set fire to uh, raw material. That is how I am aware of making fire, at least. Would it be possible to then imbue that with energy from within? Provide a different source of fuel? Of course. Absolutely. It's merely a starting point. Yes. Interesting. Well, all right. I'm going to do some experimentation then. I hadn't thought of it that way. I will be... <laughs> I will be here to guide you if you need it. I appreciate it. And thank you again for the help. The least I could do. Bounce, like, gives him a pat on the shoulder, and then comes back to reality. Cool. I assume that the first, inverted commas, night, you spend some time... Setting fire to shit. <laughs> yeah, Balance essentially finds a bunch of like sticks and twigs and is like holding them in his hand and focusing. And at some point, there's a loud exclamation as there's like a burst of flame at the end of it. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. Now with a little less surprise. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Balance is like chuckling into himself. Like, right, right. I need to look the part. Like brushes himself off. It's like <clears throat> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. Ra. Ra is going to be considerate, and he's going to do the thing he did a very long time ago and pray to Ilmater to try to figure out if Ilmater's okay because more gossip have been dying. Oh shit! Ooh. Ah, uh, damn, that's true. Raw has, to, what, Ra has to look me, out for people that have like helped him out. Tell me, tell me, let me know exactly what the prayer consists of, and I'll let you know what kind of role oh, with Ra, kind of so bonuses. It's, or, yeah, it's give it a shot, I, man. I will say we have a cleric. We have a cleric. The cleric is unconscious. <laughs> but pray over her the body. I mean, he's probably doing it like not out loud. Like with Zoltana, <laughs> he's like he's probably doing it there just in case he does have a question, but he probably isn't letting you know what he's doing. Zoltana is just like staring at you suspiciously as you quietly kneel over her. I'm not wife. doing that. I'm sitting. I'm sitting very casually, like <laughs> next to you. I thought that was what was happening. I'm like, uh, no, 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 no. no. He's just, he's sitting next to you, like contemplating how he goes about doing this. Um, so, so what, it, what are you, what are you saying? What are you, what are you doing, dude? Not necessarily out loud, but what's, what's real praying? What are you doing, I think dude? he just thinks like, hey, I'm El Mater. Um, it's Ral from that one time. Uh, <laughs> Stop it, guys. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, check and see if things were okay. Um, we're trying to help. Um, you helped me out, so if uh, you need anything, just let me know. I don't know how any of this works. Uh Take a religion check for me with advantage. <laughs> because you have a cleric of Ilmater there, and that's very gonna, cute and adorable. It's still going to be bad. Natural toy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's me for I'm not <laughs> that one time. <laughs> hey, it's Ralph from that one time, remember? Oh, my, I guess you're Mater. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, just give me a second. I clearly need just a moment. <laughs> I need to check. You fucking take all the time you need. 
God, I I love that Neil gets natural 20s for like the dumbest thing. <laughs> Just do things. <laughs> okay. Um as as you're like wondering whether it's worked or not, um you feel like a a soothing presence. It's not like the warm that you're used to feeling like when you were happy and, and cheerful and Amy's around. This is just cool and the pain in your body is just gone. It's as if someone has taken it away exactly like Balance did before when he tried to figure out what the hell was going on with your sickness. The pain in your body is gone, like the snot in the back, of like that constant like phlegmy acid in the back of your throat is just gone and you feel like you can breathe and you can move for the first time ever without any pain. And then it slowly, slowly comes back. Yeah, Raul... Uh... I guess sitting next to you, just kind of like you hear him suddenly like deep breath and he he's raw looks happy. Yeah. He very much like relaxes and like suddenly gets like extremely calm. Uh, I'm going to poke him. He, he opens an eye and looks at you. Um, hey. What's uh what's up? What's going on? Elmater's fine. Okay. Good to know. He just smiles at you. <laughs> you you uh you prayed? Yeah, like that one time, remember? Yeah, but I thought that you said that you uh that you didn't like it. Like I didn't like the room. I don't understand the symbols, but El Mater was nice. He healed me when we were there. When, when, Odette is better. She can tell you all about him. She'd love to do that. Make it like super happy if she wakes up and she gets to like, just talk about him. To, to somebody who's, you know, new to all of this. Right, yeah. And she, uh, she like, tenderly runs her fingers through Odette's hair. I want to say that at, like, some point, because um, you said that it's, like, grown kind of scraggly and crap, like, Sultana probably, like, washed it for her and, like, cleaned her up a little bit. Because it probably really hurts her heart to see her wife looking like that. As you as you brush her hair and clean out the dirt and make her more respectable, um, make her, at least if she wakes up, you will, you know, she'll feel like herself rather than um, what Dravos reduced her down to. You notice that she's missing an ear and a, um, the orifice has healed over. She's never going to hear in that ear again. I hope Travos isn't dead so I can fucking kill him. Spectre said he didn't uh, do the reaping thing to him, so uh, Good. I don't have a confirmation. I have, his, I have his fucking knife, so he ain't undefeatable no more. I'm going to murder him. I am going to slice him fucking open, and I'm going to start with his goddamn ears. I'm just going to throw this out here. When we meet Dravos again, you just have Vow of Enmity on him. <laughs> it's just there. I don't think you need to cast this on him ever again. It's just there. Um, Constant. He doesn't He doesn't get to touch my goddamn wife. No. Fuck um, that guy. Okay. Um, that reminds me, the, the, the other thing was the, the sword and the boots. Okay, um, so you put the boots on, you attune to them. Yep. Um, these boots have <laughs> very... Yeah, you put the boots on, um, and over the course of the hour or so it takes you to attune to this uh, to this item, um, you notice the boots become like 
taller they kind of like meld to your your feet and your legs and as you kind of like watch them you notice they're definitely very like elven in design the magic in them is definitely elvish they are in fact boots of elven kind oh mm-hmm. balance immediately slips them off and like chucks them at zoltana <laughs> <laughs> hey zoltana Bink. what what zoltana Bink. what put those on the boots yes She's going to throw one of them back at you and uh, aim square for your face. <laughs> no, what well, do I, I have to roll? I will let you guys decide if they hit you. <laughs> I, I'm having nothing to do with this. What What do I roll? <laughs> um, I think it's just plus your, dex- your, plus your uh, strength because it's a throwing weapon. <laughs> You're not proficient, so it's just strength. <laughs> so it was a 23. Yes, you, you hit balance with the shoes. Just one. one. She just shoe. throws one, one shoe. shoe directly at your face. Yep. No, it's a, ow. Fuck. It's a pair. You idiot. Fucking throws it back at her. Smite. Smite on the throw. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you no. just feel, feel tears of anger at you throwing shoes at her. Smite you through the. No, I'm just kidding. They're um, for her benefit, dear. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, your paladin is very loud. I give her a gift. <laughs> Um, she's so sorry, she'll put uh, the shoes on, but she's glaring at you the whole time because you haven't explained why you threw shoes at her. What well, if you give me a moment? It's, Those are the boots that we were looking at in the the shop, the ones that make it where you're less loud when you're walking around. She puts them on. Are they like? What do they look like? Are they like motorcycle boots? Are they like? I want them know, to be I'm motorcycle gonna, boots. So bad. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> They're really not. Um, Elves do want, not do motorcycle I want, boots. I just want Zoltana's no. entire like. I just I have this like image in my head of like the angrier she's getting about things, like the more her art, like she like starts looking for armor that's like like a chainmail, a chainmail leather jacket, like. <laughs> uh, They're boots not. of um, elven kind. These these boots. The uh, They're like hiking boots. No, uh, these boots go up to sort of like, uh, like up to like roughly like knee height, and they're very like ornate and pretty. Um, and you can almost feel like a heel growing on them, but like your inner dwarven nature's like it grinds them back down to a flat heel. Yeah, <laughs> like a little more practical. <laughs> That's just them reacting to you. Um, but yeah, they they look very nice. Uh, they're pretty dark. Um, so you can decide whether they're, they're black or brown. I, I don't really mind. Um, what if it's your aesthetic better? Um, black. But yeah, so. You now have a pair of elven kind boots. Um, and then the sword? The sword. The sword? Okay. okay. Is it a sword of poking? You can poke with it. It's a sword of shish kebab. Make- <laughs> you can make a mean shish kebab with it. Best shish kebab ever. Uh, okay. Um... You cannot read what is written on it because it's written in Orkish. And no one around you knows Orkish. So D- don't they? Do you know Orkish? Is there a isn't there a certain sword that uh, speaks orc? Are you going to I'm just going to say yes, um, and I will translate it. I won't make Rethic say this because this is <laughs> oh. that's, that's harsh. Um Actually, that leads really handy in because Callum Moore needs a conversation with Zoltana too. Um, okay. There is a phrase written along the bone. Uh, the, the blade is made from bone. And there's a phrase that's kind of very carefully carved in there in Orcus scripts. Um, and the name of the thing is called Greta Desh, Slayer from the Shade. Um, and the phrase written along it is be quick or be good. And by the gods, I am not good. Um, <laughs> it is a plus three weapon. Its damage is 2d8 rather than 1d8 for rapier. It gives you advantage on dexterity saves, raises the wielder's dexterity to 19. As a bonus action, you can cast haste once per day. <laughs> And it increases your HP by one per day, but resets on death. I'm sorry, what? Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Ben, you're going to need to put that on the armor stand. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh-uh. uh, uh-uh. uh. That one, that one, stay with us. <laughs> that one... If you die and you lose it. Hey, you know I'm going to lose my uh, no, turn no, real soon. No, hey, hi. Mm. <laughs> Balance is going to like uh, whenever he meditates on the sword and figures out what it does, and after talking with Zoltana and figuring out what the name and everything is from Cal, he kind of gets like very pale and looks at the sword. And very slowly just holds the handle out to Zoltana, like, I think you're going to need this as well. I definitely need it because Kalanmon is leaving me soon. Right. That Which just, is still um, really confusing. <laughs> when is you... that happening? Because we made the deal that he'd help me with Dravos and then he would Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the chat with that after we've dealt with this. Okay, um, um just tell me what I gotta put in my cal my my calendar sheet. In my calendar sheet. Please tell me. In your calendar sheet. In my calendar um, sheet. In Calamon, we'll deal with that shortly. Um, as you go to hand the, the weapon over, Marnax, Marnax says, what are you doing? I think this would be better suited in Zoltana's hands than mine. It's going on the stand. Right. Eventually, but I think in this case it may be better if she wields it. If it's lost, if it's taken from her, we will have to go find it again. It could cost us a lot of time. It could also save us a lot of time. This is a very potent weapon. I believe all the relics are. I imagine, like, Balance was like halfway to handing it to Zoltan and then just kind of freezes. Yo, balance. Balance kind of just holds a finger up. I. It is fair. It is your decision. This is a piece of you. I leave it up to you then. Zoltana is going to need a new weapon. Whether it be the rapier, the hammer, either one of the two would be of great use to us. Give it to her for now, and I will think on this between the time it takes us to get from here to the mirror room. Fair. Okay. Balance will unfreeze and hand it to Zoltana. And just before he lets go, just say, I have to mention, Monarch brought up some... Concerns. This is a loner for now. He's going to have some time to think about what it is he wants done with these weapons. That's okay. Uh, I gotta assume Cal's coming back at some point, so I don't think it'll be too big a problem. I will say this sword is quite possibly one of the most powerful weapons I've seen, barring Cal. Be very careful with it. Perfect. And Balance will explain to Zoltana what he's learned about it. Zoltana. Yeah. Uh, you are given the other pokey sword thing. I um, like pokey swords. Uh, you are given this weapon. And when everyone is cleared out or you only have one person there trying to keep you awake as uh, you're kind of like um, stroking uh, Adet's hair, you hear a kind of like... (coughs) Fwish. (laughs) Set him on my lap with a hand on on Next to Adet, like... (laughs) With a hand on the... I I I move I move Odet like gently off of my lap and I sit cross-legged and I put Cal on my lap with my hand on the handle and I look down at him like just like sadly and I'm like uh, I guess I'm guessing it's time, huh? Yes, indeed. I am the need to absorb this soul. Which soul? The god <laughs> The God we killed. Oh. Right. It was a glorious, apparently forgettable moment, <laughs> however. No, no, I didn't forget that we killed the god. I thought you already absorbed that soul. 
I need time to work on that soul. Okay. Which is why I cannot be here to help you. Well, and don't get mad. Balance gave me another powerful sword to hold me over until you can come back, but you you are coming back, right? I am, but this will take me a, a good few days, if not weeks. I've never tried to absorb the soul of a god before. I hope it's tasty. What does it taste like? At the moment... Death. I rather like it. No, no, compare it to something that I can taste. Like, because you were human once, so you know what food tastes like. Compare it to a food that I, I would understand. Because I've what never is, tasted death. What does death taste like? Licorice? Worms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> salted caramel? I don't know. No, 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 no. caramel. Death uh, tastes delicious. Tastes like... And his seed. Oh. Interesting. Kinda wish I could taste that. For now, Sultana. This is goodbye. So, what's the deal? Is it, is it, are you as a sword about to like fly out of my lap and into the night sky? Or <laughs> am I... Am, am I putting you, like, wrapping you up and putting you away? Goodbye. Like, explain explain to me what this means, because let's be honest. Free. You're a bu- <laughs> Stop! Away. I'm trying to have a serious conversation, and you're just, like, killing me. Sultana, I am. Sultana, I'm going to miss these conversations, but just keep me safe. Okay, so wrap you up. And put you away somewhere on my person, but somewhere that you're not, but don't use you as a sword. Gotcha. Okay. Because you said I'm leaving. So I was like, is he just going to like fly (laughs) out of my lap? I genuinely thought that was what was happening. There's no response from the sword. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll see you soon, Cal. And she uh, resheaths him. All right, that's that's Cannon Morn out of the picture. Um, all right, guys, anything else in these three days of travel? <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, let me just... I would like you guys to know you've got through two paragraphs of the prep that I've done <laughs> so far. I hate each and every one of you. <laughs> is that, wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing. I read, like... <laughs> Six pages of notes. <laughs> An hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> you should have seen this. There were so many conversations we had to have after that. Okay. Um, all right. On the very end of, let's say, day four, um, because it is a trek and a bit, um, towards the end of day four, uh, as you're about to cast your, like, let's jump all the way into Falsum, Um you see it off in the distance. Um, you guys have made a careful route around Dowry, um, being that it is collapsed. If you do pass it, you see, you know, it's not smoldering anymore, but it's definitely in ruins. Um, you can see that, you know, as you're riding past, there are there are definitely decaying corpses of multiple varieties of Caden and a horse. Um, a horse she recognises, Thistle. Um, cute little thing. It's just... Gracie laying at the side of the road now. Raul is st- staying in the cart. Balance looks sad. The cart. Like super sad. Yeah. Could the goddamn um, fuck happen here? Um you use I'm gonna i I'm gonna give you a little bit so you can have some side points left at the end of this. Um you use six miles of your travel through your extra let's get there now ability. Um so it's the end of of, of night four um, when you guys actually finally arrive in Falsum. So I need to update my timeline because that's super important right now. You are technically on the end of day twenty eight. No, that's the wrong that's the wrong group. Yeah. You're technically on the end of day of fifty two. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, only fifty two days in, guys. Oh, Jesus. We've done so okay. much in fifty two days. Jesus fucking Christ. And according to Volanda's timeline, we haven't done nearly enough. 
Um, you guys arrive in Falsim. Let me just scroll down to Falsim. The first thing you notice is that the stable is completely gone. It has been trampled down, knocked down. It's been torn apart. There aren't any bodies or corpses lying around. That's all been cleared up, but the wreckage of the stables themselves are very clear. As you arrive at the gates, you notice that there are scorch marks, and as you begin to actually look around in the fading lights, you realise there is a lot of scorch marks. The grass has been burnt and just beginning to grow back. There's a lot of these marks. As you make your way inside, you see that there are abandoned carts to the left and to the right. They're still broken, torn to pieces. Many of the houses you notice have been partially knocked down or destroyed. Ral, your house is nothing but rubble. The shack that you guys were temporarily held in, shall we say, has been burnt to the ground. Caden's home too is nothing but rubble. And as you continue making your way through, you realise that the monastery itself has also been partially broken and knocked down. But it's mostly standing. The prison, as you get closer to that, you see that one wing of it, the walls have collapsed and fallen and broken. But there are still people moving around in there. The library off in the far distance, nothing but rubble. And the Witcher Society? It looks as if people have begun fixing that. There are bricks being moved. You can see that people are now being called in to finish their shift. It's being partially reconstructed with magic and with might. This is what you guys see when you arrive. There are very few people in the streets at this time of night. Most of them seem to be making their way towards either the monastery, the prison, or the Witcher Society. We're all going to go to his house and kind of just start kicking around in the rubble, kind of aimlessly. You start shifting pieces of rubble with your foot. It's just broken and torn down. The table, bed, broken. Amos hidey hole. Broken into, open, no longer there. Yeah, after a minute, he comes back. Zoltana, like, puts an arm around you and, like, squeezes and hug. You feel his tail, like, come around and, like, kind of mimic that same motion. (laughs) He's not, like, leaning over to, like, put a hand on your shoulder or anything because I imagine he probably has to. (laughs) Well, I'm, I am short, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, he gives you a little squeeze with his tail. Okay. When all this is done, Roll, we'll get you... We'll get your house rebuilt. That's... It's, it's, I couldn't stay in it anyways. Just aim as more than anything. Then we'll get you a new one. It's a sentimental thing. I know. I get it. It's. Would it help if we found the people that tore down your house and murdered them all? So, Sultana, that that doesn't work for everybody. It, <laughs> that's <laughs> why I asked it, it was... if it would help. I didn't say it will help. I said, would it help? I'm being conscientious of other people's needs. Okay, balance. No, I, Raw listen, shakes his I, head and <laughs> says, no, they I, all look like Caden. That will make it worse. I think as you guys are bickering the toss over whether murdering things is uh, therapeutic or not, um, I will say that this this episode comes to a close. Ooh, so, pretty little image. Standing in the it. wreckage of Rawl's house. Yeah, <laughs> bickering mm. as you guys do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. All right there, my lovelies. Well, I guess it's about time that you and I part ways, isn't it? Be taking Jens' egg, and we'll be trying to find other people to try and fight the big fight. I really hope they get on all right, without us, I mean. I hope they're not lost or confused or need our help or nothing, but, you know, bigger picture and all that. 
well, if you, uh, if there's anything you want to say or let us know or anything like that, you can get hold of us at the Lucky Day Podcast at gmail.com. Probably one of the better ways to get hold of us. Someone's always there on the other end of the line, willing to send back a, a message or two. No, I think that's probably it. I don't think I've got really a lot more to say than that. It's been nice travelling with him. Dangerous, and I don't think Jens is too happy she's an egg now, but yeah. Well, till next time. Hello, Aria. Uh, Did you want to listen in on me and Rock enjoying ourselves? Don't encourage Should I describe to you what we're doing Um, right now? (laughs) What's going on? Let's see. Look, these wind shells document anything you do in order to banish the spirits. I don't banish spirits. I'm fixing the tango. Of course, we can't open a new hole into the aetherweb every year. But spirits aren't always bad. Are Those they? are exactly the reason tango weeds happened in the first Akasar, place. I'm sure Rocka knows how to get through a water gate without disrupting the magic belt. So what happens when there's a hole in the weave? Does magic <laughs> pour out? It is already broken! Let more of air into this world! I'll destroy Wait, every no, single no. one of them! You've fed enough already! I will kill you, you filthy Whoa, little... whoa, whoa! Come down, Kaka! Try it, fellow jester! God, ferocious rune master! Your friction will grind the weave away! <sighs> Yarta. In moments like these, I wish I could see the runes. What's wrong, Raka? Is that tangle weave maybe too difficult even for someone as great as you? Counterbalance, a high fantasy audio drama. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get podcasts from.